What is up guys and welcome to my GPU overclocking video. A uh, quick couple things here in the beginning. I just wanted to explain how I got the clock speeds that I settled on. Uh, for the stock clock, I let GPU Boost 2.0 uh, decide where that was going to be. If you don't know what GPU Boost 2.0 is, link down in the description, it will explain everything. So what the clocks ended up being for stock was 1162 uh, megahertz on the GPU and 1752 megahertz on the memory. Um, on the overclock, I went in and manually tweaked it up to 1254 megahertz on the GPU and 2000 megahertz on the memory. I did not tweak the voltage at all because I wanted to keep this test as basic as possible. And uh, without messing with the voltage, this is the, the biggest overclock I could get. On the fans, I left them on auto. So I will go over the temperatures, but remember you can always turn the fan up higher if you wanna cool down the card a little bit more. Anyway, let's get into it. So right off the bat, I will mention that I saw an increase in frames with every single uh, overclock I did in every single benchmark, so that is awesome. Unlike the CPU where I saw some kind of meh behavior a lot of the times, the GPU is pretty much guaranteed to give you a frame rate increase. So starting off our benchmarks, obviously with Heaven, I left everything on Ultra, Tessellation on Moderate, and Anti-Aliasing on four times. The stock clock gave us 56.5 frames per second, all while staying at 73 degrees Celsius peak temperature. A uh, overclock gave us 62.5 frames per second while raising the temperature up to 75 degrees. So moving on to Bioshock Infinite, a benchmark you've probably seen before if you've watched any of my overclocking videos. And um, what I did use is ultra preset with no depth of field. And on average, we were getting 105 frames per second on the stock clock. And I added an extra little number in here with shadow play on and went down to 102 frames per second. And all that while staying at a peak of 67 degrees Celsius. With the overclock, we jumped all the way up to 113 frames per second. While shadow play was running, we dropped down to 109 frames per second. And our max temperature while all that was happening was 73 degrees Celsius. Moving on to Metro 2033, I left everything on very high, but I did not turn on depth of field or phys X for this test. And with the stock clock, we got 53 frames per second. With shadow play running, we dropped down to 51 frames per second, all while staying at a peak of 68 degrees Celsius. Onto the overclock, 58 frames per second on average, and dropping down to 55 frames per second with shadow play running. And here's where I saw the biggest increase in heat. I think my temperature in my house might have changed here because it jumped all the way up to 75 degrees Celsius, which is a seven degree jump that I don't really have any explanation for there. But um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, guess that that was part of a climate change. Alrighty guys, now to Just Cause 2, the concrete jungle. I left everything on high. Um, this is the most demanding of the um, benchmarks that are built into Just Cause 2. And on the stock clocks, I got 65 frames per second on average, dropping down to 63 while recording with shadow play. And the peak temperature we got during that was 69 degrees Celsius. Onto the overclock, we got a nice bonus with uh, 70 frames per second on average, dropping down to 67 while shadow play was recording. And all while hitting a top temperature of 71 degrees Celsius. Alrighty guys, I think that just about does it for this video. I hope this sheds some light on how much of a performance boost you can get by just overclocking your video card. Uh, opposed to something like your CPU where you only see improvements in certain scenarios. Uh, if you're just a gamer, a graphics card overclock is always going to help you. It's really simple. Uh, link down below to Precision X software if you were kind of curious about overclocking and all that. There are plenty of videos online that you can go and watch and learn how to overclock. It's really pretty safe with software like this, especially if you're uh, setting your thermal limits and not messing with voltage you should be more than good to go thank you guys so much for watching the video and i will talk to you later